Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about chemical formulas for binary ionic compounds. So just as a rundown of what a chemical formula is, remember it's like a recipe on how to make a compound. Just like H2O, okay? I need two hydrogens and one oxygen to make water. That's my recipe. Chemical formulas give us symbols for the element. And it also tells us how many of that element? Okay, so if I had, say, Cl3, all right, this is saying I need three chlorines, okay? Well, we are going to look at how to do this for binary ionic compounds. Now, we will get into transition metals and polyatomic soon enough, but let's start off with the basic. All right, binary ionic compounds. Keyword, ionic. Remember, with ionic, we have a metal attached to a nonmetal. We have a cation attached to an anion, a positive attached to a negative charge. All right, so we still got to keep it in our, our format that we learned with ionic compounds. We know that the metal comes first. All right, the non-metal second in our chemical formula. Okay, we're also going to talk about how to name it. Okay, now to name it, we look down here at this bottom part right here. It says the metals, the first thing in the formula, get to keep their original name. All right, it's the first element. It's the, um, kind of like the important one, all right? It's the fancy name. It just keeps its name. So if it's iron, it's iron. If it's copper, it's copper. All right, lithium is lithium. All right, but the second one, and this is something that you should pay attention to right here. All right, it says the second one, the non-metals ending is dropped, and it's replaced with an IDE ending. So things like oxygen are going to become oxide. I've no, I know you've heard these examples before, like... Uh, fluorine becomes fluoride. So if you need help with that, look at your list. You know, nitrogen nitride, um, chlorine chloride, all right? We'll work on that. So when you name an ionic compound, you look at the formula. The first one, the metal, gets to keep its original name. The second one, gets the IDE ending. Now, you're probably asking yourself right now, well, how do I figure out the formula? Now, there's a lot of different ways that you could figure it out, all right? It all comes back to one important characteristic, all right? The total charges must be zero, right? That's the whole reason why everything makes bonds. Now, there's a quick little easy way I'm going to show you how to do this, and we're going to use this with transition metals and polyatomic as well. And it's being part, metals keep their original name, non-metals endings get dropped and replaced with the IDE. The crisscross method. All right, now this is a good method. All right, now it looks like a bunch of rules right here, but don't worry, we're going to practice it, and you're going to see that it's extremely easy to use. All right, rule one says you write out the elements with their charges in superscript. That means up in the air. So for a calcium, it'd be like... Calcium positive two, okay? The metal goes first and then the non-metal, okay? Now, moving on. Step two says the charge of the first, all right, tells you how many you need of the second and vice versa. The charge of the second tells you how many you need of the first. And it says once you place the number to the bottom, erase the charge sign. All right, so we'll move those numbers, and don't worry if it seems a little confusing. I'm going to go through these steps with you on a couple of examples, and you're going to be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Step four says, uh, if you have a superscript that is one, I'm going to, sorry, a subscript that is one, then you don't have to write it. All right, and number five, if the numbers are the same, then they already cancel out. So... This little, that, those three through five steps are just cleaning up your formula. You don't have to write the, the charge sign at the bottom. You don't have to write ones. And if they're the same number, then they cancel out because they are already going to have a charge of zero. So let's go ahead and work through these steps with some 
We have an easy problem to begin with. Step one, write the elements with their charges in superscript. Step two says the charge of the first tells me how many I need of the second. Charge of the second tells me how many I need of the Step three over here, once you place a number at the bottom, you erase the charge. Number uh, four, right there, needing. Go back to our rules. It says if the numbers are the same, if those charges are the same, then they already cancel out. All right. What if I said I want to make a bond between lithium and oxygen? Okay, well, let's go ahead and follow our say. We could do that. All right, lithium. All right, and if I look up lithium, it's over here in this first column. So it is a positive one. Okay, uh, next one. I have oxygen. Oxygen is O, and it is a negative two charge. Okay. So I have step one here. So here's the criss part, uh, crisscross part of the crisscross method. This one tells me how many I need of the second. This number, the charge of the second, tells me how many I need of the first. So all I'm doing is taking these numbers and I am pulling them down to the opposite side. I'm crisscrossing them. All right, and so I'll rewrite this. I got lithium and it has a two now next to it. Remember, we don't write the charge, all right? That was done. So it's Li2, and then it is O, and then how many did we have to the O? One. But we know from that we do not need this one, all right? You're probably asking yourself, well, okay, how come I you know, don't need that number right there. It's been simple. If I have this O already written, it's saying I have one oxygen. So I, it's redundant to put a one after it. Kind of like in algebra. Well, you don't write one X. You just write X. You don't need that one. You get rid of it. You can just say X. All right? It's the same thing. Okay. Now we have a correct chemical formula. Let's go ahead and name it according to what we talked about. All right, so lithium remains lithium, okay? It gets to keep that. The oxygen, it has to change its name. So oxygen's gonna get that I-D-E ending. So oxygen becomes oxide. Okay, so lithium oxide. And this is our crisscross method. We're gonna practice it two more times so I can show you the tricks, but simply the charge of the first tells you how many you need of the second, the charge of the second tells you how many you need of the first. A positive two and a negative. Let's move on with an example. Excuse me, an example right here. All right, I got calcium and I got chlorine. All right, so calcium, if I look on the periodic table, all right, it's over here in the positive two charge, okay? If I look up chlorine, it's over here in the halogens, so Cl negative one. So now let's go ahead and make a chemical formula for calcium and chlorine. So the charge of the first tells me how many I need of the second. Charge of the second tells me how many I need of the first. And now I just go ahead and rewrite it. I got Ca1, but remember we don't write ones. And then we got Cl and then two, because this two went all the way down right here. So what was originally a superscript or in the air, then eventually becomes a subscript down below. All right, so be careful where you put these numbers. Okay, so that's our crisscross, that's our chemical formula, but now we need to know the name. All right, remember our rules. The first one gets to keep its name. Calcium remains calcium. All right, the second one has to have that I-D-E ending. So chlorine is going to become chloride. Note the I-D-E ending. All right, so calcium chloride, all right, is C-A-C-L-2. We have the right formula. We have the right name. We are doing good. Cancel E. So let's go ahead and look at one that yeah, might be a little bit more difficult. Let's see if we could do it together, okay? So let's first go ahead with our first step of the crisscross me method. We write down the elements, their symbols, and their charges. 
So we got magnesium. Okay, magnesium's over here in the positive two, so it is positive two charge. Then we have sulfur, okay, over there in the negative two. Hmm, okay. Now, let's do some crisscross. Charge of the first tells me how many I need of the second. Charge of the second tells me how many I need of the first. And what we would look like we would get from this is Mg2s2. But wait a minute, the other out. So I don't have to write either one of these. And I could simply just say, when they cancel out, Mgs. Okay, so that's the correct chemical formula for a magnesium and sulfur. Well, what is its correct name? Okay, so remember the first one gets to keep its name. And the second one has to get the IDE ending. So sulfur is going to become sulfide with the IDE ending. So there we go. We've practiced three different times the crisscross method. Uh, if you have questions, you know, ask your teacher, ask me, and go ahead and try to complete any problems that you might have in Google Classroom.